you are like the only yeah. guy. It's like you <laughs> and like the showrunners of the. Witcher. I have fun. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> it's a, this is my role. I hate Henry Cavill, Robin Williams, and um. <laughs> what did Robin do to you? <laughs> oh, oh, Brendan Fraser. <laughs> oh, you can't come back full circle and pretend like you didn't actually dislike Robin Williams. I see what you're trying to do. <laughs> no, you, you meant what you said about that great man. Robin Williams. That hero. He became like the guy. You know what? He's a hero. We love this guy. And I get it. He was having a hard time that. and he was sick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the whole world was like just singing his praises after he killed himself. And I was like, man, I bet there's a lot of other people who are thinking about themselves who are like, I'd like to be a hero. So someone had to say this was a bad idea. It was a bad idea, but the people were singing his praises. They weren't like, it's so good. He killed himself. They were like, oh, my God, he was so wonderful. And Patch Adams and uh, yeah. Goodwill Hunting. And it's such a shame that this guy with all this talent you know, took his own life because of, you know, and at the time, I think. Didn't people? It was like the thought at the time, like he might have Parkinson's or something. Was that it? He was in the month after William's death, a 32% increase in the method used by the comedian himself. But in general, rose just 3%. See, they copied him. He inspired future suicide victims. He he informed people. Look, what's wrong with? I don't know why it's such a bad thing. There's plenty. uh, We joke joke about, I joke about always, it's always a bad thing. What if it, it lowers is crime? Usually a bad thing. People it's who commit would otherwise be bad, maybe. So if you have <laughs> MS, you, you're paralyzed in pain all the time, and, and and you're just wasting away there. It's it's not time to to go go for that syringe in the drawer. I think it depends on the person's like life and the surrounding context, right? Like if they're 40 years old and it just started early onset or something, and they still have kids, and like they're like, then of course, like you don't yourself if you are. 72 and you are a constant pain and life is hell then like yeah you should be able to do that if that's what you think is well, where's is the suffering you. level how much do i have to hurt before it's okay i mean that would be subjective it's i'm not saying that you you can't what do it i'm scenario? saying that it's not good the guy had kids but like, let's say suffering. like the guy was like 40 years old and he's got ms and it's you know starting to get rough or whatever like he should absolutely consider, mm. like, yeah, I still have children. He has like, to keep life is dragging pain. his ass to work because someone else wants him to be a paycheck. I didn't say that he oh, had a headache. No. I said he has no. <laughs> We're talking about people who are who are going to die, who are laying there suffering, and the doctors are saying, "Oh, you, you're gonna love this, sir. We can keep you like this for so long." <laughs> yeah, I understand yeah, what you're saying. That it, that's like the worst parts of uh, like space horror novels when something like when a chaos god like Nurgle makes someone <laughs> rot and decompose and then regenerates them back to full youth and lets it happen again and again and again in perpetuity forever. That's what lying in some of those beds are with some of these degenerative diseases. So I think that is often a wonderful thing. It's a release and, and, and not just for the person who's been laying in that bed, but for their whole family who's ha- who's been sitting there suffering alongside them and and held up in time and space alongside them, waiting on them to pass on. It's often a great thing. I I understand what you're saying about that. But like, again, you have to construct a very specific thing. Like, like in both, it is literally life and death. And so you need to treat it with severity. Like it is not a good move. Most of the time to yourself like that is uh, obvious. You mean like most of if you're the talking time as, just as in most someone? of the time that we experience? Like 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 right now is probably not a good time for me to kill myself because I I'll agree with you there. <laughs> of course. <laughs> however, however, I don't think that most of the suicide. I, I, I would like to see all the and then see how many of these people were just bummed out. How many of these people yeah, had yeah. a had a bad thing happen today and immediately said, "Oh, I can't live in this world." I, Bang. I, yeah, I, I guess what I dislike is any kind of framing of. That makes it seem like an out, like even in the context of an 89 year old who's going to die three days from now, but wants to die now instead, like, because that's not the person you're talking to when you discuss topics like this, like the people that hear it are people who are like, you are not 85 year olds. Like, I think it's bad to present suicide in any way as something that could like, it's, it's bad. It's fucking bad. Like, you don't want to. No, like unless you are fucking 90 years old and like already dying. So is so is it's, amputation unless you have gangrene. All right. Like like there are situations where it's over and, and we've got to cut the limb off and we've got to cut the life off. 
I, I remember that guy who had uh, extreme radiation poisoning, and they kept him alive, basically melting oh, on top of so that bed up. for months, just just because they could. Just okay, good example, could. excellent example, right there. Like, yeah, that guy he felt pain. They can, it's unimaginable. Should have been like that. Pain. Shit's not necessary. Like at some point, it's time to let go. Again, I'm not talking about you're bummed out because your boyfriend <laughs> left you. I'm yeah. not talking about like you you're an incel. I'm talking about. You're on fire. You're on fire. The thermite won't stop. No, the, the thermite won't stop burning. It's so hot. <laughs> you're on fire. Dude, thermite paint. God. On that's, the towers. <laughs> that's how they brought him down was thermite paint on the inside there of the go. towers. That's Jesse Ventura. That's Jesse the body Ventura. <laughs> I'm glad you actually got it. Because that would have been embarrassing. I've, I've never I'm glad you brought that, like, but I got it And you it bring anyways. us to another public <laughs> instance of, of, of mass. 11 where dozens and dozens of people were seen jumping from the towers to escape the burning flames and gases that were cooking their skin and lot and lungs yeah that's it wasn't a helicopter horrible. coming superman's not on the way it's time to jump yeah you wonder if if like in in that moment you're even cogently thinking that you're jumping to your death or you're just escaping the inevitable death brought by It'd be smoke. So cool if someone was on top planning to base jump and was just like, you know what? I can <laughs> say one to happen at a better time. <laughs> Fuck it out of here. <laughs> and then like he's just so many cameras on 9 11 the Twin <laughs> Everyone <laughs> laughed at John who brought a parachute to work with him every day for eight years <laughs> until <laughs> September eleventh, two thousand and one. Uh, <laughs> and it shows him like taking off his parachute at home and he's like i'm tired of being made fun of and it says like <laughs> september 10th like <laughs> <laughs> do you think he'd be it all should... high and mighty about it in the post 9-11 interviews like like he's he's wearing it in the interviews like Haha, they laughed at me for years he's Boom, bitch. laughing now jump <laughs> out and float on down to the nearest ferry and <laughs> just like back. dude i'm at the hostel five days a week <laughs> 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 i'm letting those old bags no you've had your stay mm. yeah <laughs> social security's crumbling you fuckers if mm -hmm. they can't contribute to the gdp they need to off themselves that's what i i start preaching reaganomics to them and then the mm -hmm. next thing you know one two three they're offing themselves yeah trickle yourself six feet under how about that oh maybe <laughs> we could do I trickle down <laughs> <the year two. laughs> I, I think a euthanasia ser uh, service could do well I, I, it's legal in Washington State. Where where else is it legal? Canada, Euthanasia. Switzerland. It's yeah, really Euthanasia. legal yeah. in Canada. They love it in Canada. They're a little <laughs> oh, they're overzealous with the euthanasia, even for my taste. Wh wisdom Canada. teeth, huh? <laughs> I can. <laughs> <laughs> Bet that hurts, don't it? <laughs> yeah, that's gonna sting, buddy. You sure? Here, here. This this will make that pain go away. Oh, what is this? Like Tylenol or something? No, that'll kill you. Wait, what? <laughs> Damn, yeah, almost way, got another one. It's your way out of that pain, sir. <laughs> It's your way out of Canada. It's Turn your guns in now. Turn your guns in. Yeah, those poor Canadians. I have the list. Do you want to know where euthanasia is legal? Yes, sir. Belgium, Canada, Colombia, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Spain, and a few Australian states. Hmm. Those are mostly good countries. That's active euthanasia. There's also passive euthanasia where you yeah, just like there. remove the treatment with life support. America's there. Oh, I thought yeah. you were referring to the way that every um, like hostile nurse will give you enough vials of of whatever the the, I, the I have, oh a hospice. Nurse. So, so the list of things I read is active voluntary euthanasia. Mm -hmm. that's, I understand. That's that. not America. Oh, okay, maybe I okay. misunderstood what you're saying. Okay, yeah, because like the, for those of us who are fortunate enough not to have to deal with that before, like that that with hostile sir, at some point someone will be like, now make sure they don't take three of these. Because three of these, man, they'd have a real peaceful sleep and go on to heaven. Yeah, I had that <laughs> conversation. Four of my these friend did too. Go to hell. It's weird. By the way, one of them will make you horny as fuck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're like, you gave me six. I noticed. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> they, <laughs> they give you morphine because you're treating for someone who's dying, and then they're like, this is amount deals with pain. This amount puts them in a peaceful death. And it's just like, well, what? what? You just taught me how to. Okay, now we know. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. It's a it's an interesting uh, philosophical question. And I think some there are some people whose version will be, or whose morals tell them, 
No, you lay there and you suffer until God's done with you. <laughs> until he's done. Mm-hmm. He'll let you know because you won't be able, because you'll die. Or the Taylor way. <laughs> you contribute to the GDP, you selfish son of a bitch. Your that's, kids need your paycheck. From your lips to God's ears. You need me production. You can't, you can't how greet you, anymore. Bye bye. How, <laughs> how do you feel about running the credit cards up of a, a dead loved one? Do you I'm feel like that's that? Do you feel that? Don't you feel like, especially if the loved one cared about their credit, like that's a bit shameful to do to them? It doesn't transfer to or anything. No, no, credit no. Card that does not. Transfer. Little tip for everyone in Minecraft: if you know something, <laughs> if the, if the worst <laughs> is going on in your world right now, then a loved one's credit cards at the end could be completely maxed out, and and then they pass away, and so does their credit report. And that mm-hmm. debt. And yep, yet the jet ski remains, Lord. Yes. It remains. <laughs> yet the jet ski remains. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, thank you for giving us this sea do. <laughs> Hopefully these people are worth more than nothing upon their death. Right? Like I, yeah. I was thinking to myself, because your estate pays off your, the debt. So like if, if this is oh. a person with any kind of inheritance, even a shitty one at like eight grand. Well, shit, that's like your jet ski, I guess. I don't know what they call it. I don't know. I, I feel like you could liquidate all the assets long before the credit card companies actually come for you in a legal kind of binding way that would that would matter. Uh, so, so yeah. you know what I mean? There, who's that comedian who tells this story? Doug Stanhope. He, Doug Stanhope tells the story. He's like, I couldn't tell this until the statute of limitations is up. But when my mom was dying of whatever she had, degenerative mm-hmm. painful disease, there was a night when she finally decided this is it. And she drank this, like, I don't know, milkshake of opium. And I gave it to her and we laughed and we said this and that. He's like, and then I ran her credit cards up. <laughs> <I'm> yeah. on... <laughs> like, like, he tells the whole bit. And in, in her like, dying days, she hit her credit limit on Amazon.com. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he even says stuff like that. He's like, and but somehow through the haze. She managed to order a jet ski. Like, just, just, like, like look up, look up Doug Stanhope, mom or mom death uh-huh. credit card or something like that, and you'll find the clip. It's hysterical, very yeah. very funny bit. But I it's think um, I'm of the, the the standpoint of like I think it's a bit dishonorable to do that to their credit report because uh, uh, because the United States capitalist system has made me believe that credit reports, which were invented in 1989 are somehow akin to a person's worth and honorability. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah, you have to be in <laughs> debt to be worth something. You know? I think I wouldn't want to leave you with a bad credit report. <gasps> what will the debtors think of you? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Dishonored you know? your family. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. That, is how, that is how I think about credit. No, I think what Doug did was great. Big ups oh, to yeah. Doug Stanhope for, for getting himself a C-do or whatever. New, new Unethical life pro tip. Seer sucker suits. Yeah, Whatever big time. Unle- I mean, there's a reason we mentioned the statute of limitations on that one. That's not Minecraft statutes. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a. I, I'm I'm still kind of iffy on that one. That's a that's a that's a weird moral one for me. Even though I'm perfectly okay, okay with all the euthanasia. Yeah, if you're old and sick, you should be able to decide that. How sick should you have to be? What if you're just old and tired? How old? Seventy five. All right, that's a you're good. You you come in, you're 75. You know, you, you say, I've had it. Hook yeah. me up. What yep. if you're 65 and you're looking forward and you decide there's no more fun left? I'm gonna pop smoke, call it call it a light. Pop smoke and you just yeah. go, Well, I guess there's there's no stopping you. He'll just go to fucking uh Belgium and then give the Belgians that euthanasia money instead of us. Oh, God eh, you can do it on your own on the cheap. <laughs> That's yeah, true. But, but, <laughs> but they're pros. And there's really no reason to be a penny pincher on this. Can you, imagine I mean? going through <laughs> Can you imagine going through customs to kill yourself? Yeah, people Ugh. do it. People what do it. What a pain in the ass. Like the one of the last experience on earth is like they lost your luggage. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Actually, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, you know what? <laughs> Normally this would bother me. But the truth is, I don't need to buy yeah. his clothes. <laughs> I want. I don't I want mind to- that I'm banned from the airport. Like, <laughs> <laughs> how does for what is youth rats? <laughs> what does euthanasia sound like with a racist Asian accent? Ruth, fuck, ooh, 
it, it sounds like youth of Eurasia, which also sounds Euthanasia. like the youth. Of, so that sounds like the youth of Asia. So you could have like a really funny comedy movie where, where that was a misunderstanding. That's what I thought it was at first, the first time I heard it, like as a kid, youth, youth in Asia. Asia. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, youth in Asia. Mm-hmm. Mm. Those, those kids like are a real know. fucking problem. Apparently, How have I never heard of that. You think <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that'd be a good band those name? It's <laughs> <are> controversial. <laughs> yeah, we're the euthanasia. <laughs> 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 that's a good. Oh, I one. love that. That's a good K-pop band name. Oh, that's my new gamer tag. <laughs> euthanasia. It's actually, a sick band name. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it is. Go, delete this part of the episode. Oh. We're gonna we're gonna start our own four person trademark band. FES production. Yeah. Oh, we, we should like, just be terrible at it <laughs> all right now first question does anyone uh, know how to play an instrument all right here's what we actually need let's play make a, a drum let's make a sort of band yes <laughs> we're, we're a quarter nice of the way there because uh, i was gonna play percussion but uh, I only that, that might be the first time we've ever had a good idea for a t-shirt a fake band called youth in asia and it's a band t-shirt and it looks like a real band t-shirt That'd with be a tight. picture of a band <laughs> and, like, and mm. like a logo that says youth in asia i like that that's a good one get on it taylor right <laughs> along with the poop site all oh, right. As soon as I get the final coding See, done on the poop site, done. I come Taylor, with the ideas. Don't job. make me put the hot sauce in the bottle. In the, in the <laughs> Just to, I need to be busy all the time mm-hmm. facilitating Kyle's ideas into reality. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, right. and, ag- and again, Kyle, we're hemorrhaging money the <laughs> on the on the, the look and see pound. It's upsetting people. They don't want to go to the pound and t- touch the sick dogs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, watch, you know, forcing people to watch the death of a dog at a pound before they get there. So they realize how serious it is. Yeah, that's I mean, that's how they made me keep my dog after I found out he was defective and bitey. You know, I, I got him home and he bit the other dog over food. Now, he doesn't do that anymore. It was just like his first day and he'd been in prison for a while. But uh, but I was like, damn, you got to go back, buddy. You bit the other dog. And they're like, you know, we're going to kill him. Right. I'm like, what? Yeah, we're gonna smoke his ass as soon as you leave. And I was, I, I, I didn't make a full on scene, but I was like a, like a, like a little bit of a Karen. I was like, "Come on, Rocky, let's get out of here. We're not gonna let him kill you." And I like said it enough for the people in the like, like the area around me to hear. I was like, "Yeah, they want murderers. Kill him. They're gonna <laughs> kill him if I don't take him." And they didn't tell me that he had a metal rod in his leg and he's bitey. Look at his leg. And they're like, oh, anyway, happy hunting. Like, (laughs) just leaving. (laughs) 